Hello everybody, this is Maisie and this is Maisie's Grandpa Bob and Maisie and Grandpa Bob are in the story that we're going to tell today. It's called Maisie and the North Wind. But before we start the story, there's some things that maybe you could have that would help you join in too. Now the first thing is a fan to make the feeling of the wind on your face. Now it's okay if you don't have a fan, you could use a piece of paper or a piece of card or a magazine, anything that's going to make a draft on your face. As well as the fan and the feeling of the wind, maybe you could make the sound of the wind, can you blow? Now I've got my own sound of the wind here. Can you hear it? You do it too. As well as the sound of the wind, we're going to need something that you can tap. Now, I've got claves to tap, but if you don't have claves, you could use two wooden spoons. You can tap them together, or you could tap them on the table, or you could tap them on your chair. Anything that makes a tapping noise. And the next thing you need is an action, okay? I've got a sound here, listen. Do you hear that? That is magic. And you can make the sign magic too. But as well as that, you could wiggle your fingers as if you were casting a spell. Let's practice. Magic. That's us ready to start the story. Right, Maisie. So, Maisie and Grandpa Bob lived in a little house far away from the town, far away from the shops and far away from people. And they lived at a time where there was no food in the shops. And Maisie and Grandpa Bob didn't have any food left. One day, Grandpa Bob said to Maisie, Maisie, in the shed at the bottom of the garden, there's a sack of flour. There might be some left in it. Could you please go to the shed and bring back any flour that's left? And maybe we could make some bread. So Maisie set off. Out the door, down to the shed at the bottom of the garden. Now this is where you need your fan, okay. She opened the door and the north wind was blowing hard. It was cold. Let me hear you make the sound of the wind. went into the shed and she went over and she got the sack and she looked in the sack and there was a tiny amount of flour left in the sack. So she put it in a bowl and she went back to the house. She opened the door of the shed, get your fan, make that wind blow and the wind was blowing so strongly. <sighs> Maybe should have, maybe should have practiced that bit first. <laughs> Didn't want to waste the flour. <laughs> the wind was blowing so strongly that it blew the flour right out of Maisie's hands and it disappeared in the air. Maisie was furious. She went into the house and she shouted, Grandpa Bob, that wind has blown the, the flour right out my hands. I'm going to chase it, see if I can get it back. Now get your cleaves or your spoons. You ready? So, Maisie ran fast as she could, chasing the north wind all the way back to where the north wind stayed. 
in a cave at the bottom of a mountain. She went into the cave and she shouted, you have wasted all the flour that we had left. Now we've got nothing to eat. Oh, the north wind was very sorry. He said, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. In exchange, let me give you this tablecloth. A tablecloth, said Maisie. What good is that going to do for me? He said, but it's not an ordinary tablecloth. You get your magic ready. It's a magic tablecloth. If you put the tablecloth on your table and say, feed me, your table will be full of food and you'll never have to worry about having no food again. Oh, said Maisie. That sounds like a good idea. Fair exchange, I'll take the tablecloth. So she took the tablecloth and off she went, setting off back to the house. But she didn't realise how far she had run. It was a long, long way. On the way, Maisie passed an inn and she thought, oh, I'm getting a bit hungry and I'm a bit tired. I'll just stop here for a rest. So she stopped at the inn and she sat at a table. Now, she didn't have any money. She looked about her. She took the tablecloth, get your magic ready, and she put the tablecloth on the table in front of her. Ready with the magic? She said, feed me. And suddenly the table was full of food. Well, she ate everything until she was so full she needed to sleep. So she sat back in her chair and she closed her eyes. Now, the innkeeper had been watching this and he was amazed. How could she have got all that food on the table? So while Maisie was sleeping, he crept up and he took the tablecloth and in its place, he exchanged it for a completely different thing. Maisie woke up. She didn't notice that it's a different tablecloth. She folded it up, put it in her bag and went back to Grandpa Bob. Grandpa Bob, she said, I'm so excited. Wait till you see what I've got. And she took out the tablecloth, put it on the table, and she said, feed me. And nothing happened. She was livid. That north wind, that was just no good. I'm going back tomorrow and I'll speak to him about this. So the next day, She ran as fast as she could. No, faster than that. She was in a hurry. She got to the cave where the north wind was blowing. Get your fan. And she was angry. She said to the north wind, that tablecloth didn't work. Oh, I'm so sorry, said the North Wind. Please forgive me. I tell you what, in exchange for the tablecloth, I'll give you this hen. A hen, said Maisie. Eggs. The North Wind said, but this is no ordinary hen. If you say to the hen, hen, lay get your magic suddenly there were four huge golden eggs in front of Maisie the north wind said this hen lays golden eggs you will never have any money worries ever again <gasps> oh thank you said Maisie I'll take the hen that's a fair exchange so off she went back to the house but again she got a bit tired she came to the inn she went into the inn and she sat down she didn't have any money she looked about 
and she said, Hen, lay, and four more golden eggs were lying in the basket. The innkeeper came up and asked her if she wanted something to eat and she said, yes, please, and this will pay for it nicely, thank you very much. Well, the innkeeper again was very suspicious. He brought all the food that Maisie could eat. She ate it all up, she was really full, but she was a bit tired. So she lay back and went to sleep. So while she was sleeping, the innkeeper came up and he took the hen and he exchanged the hen for a cockerel. But cockerels don't lay eggs. Maisie woke up, she didn't notice it wasn't a hen. And she put the hen in her bag and off she went back to Grandpa Bob. Grandpa Bob, wait till you see this. All our worries are over, she said. Cockerel? <laughs> hen? <laughs> Not cockerel. Hen, lay. Well, of course it wasn't the hen, it was the cockerel. It didn't lay any eggs. She was angry. I don't believe it, she said. I'm going back to that north wind tomorrow. So the next day, Kate Claves. She ran as fast as she could. Can you do some fast tapping? Are you ready? She got back to the cave where the north wind was blowing. She looked at the north wind and she said, it's happened again. That hen didn't work. Look! And she showed the wind, the cockerel. Now the wind decided to play a trick. He said, I think I know what's been happening. In exchange, take this broom. A broom? She said, I don't want to clean anything up. But the, the wind said, no, this isn't an ordinary broom. Get your magic. He said, this is a magic broom. All you need to do is say, broom, sweep. And the broom will sweep all your worries away. Maisie said, mm, okay then. That's a good exchange. So, she took the broom. And she went back to the inn for a rest. She sat down and she closed her eyes. Now the innkeeper, after having taken the tablecloth and the hen, thought, hmm, I bet that brooms magic as well. So while Maisie was asleep, he tiptoed over and he picked up the broom. As he was about to move, Maisie opened her eyes because she was only pretending to be sleeping and she shouted, broom, sweep! And the broom started to beat the innkeeper and sweep him up until he started shouting and yelling, oh stop, stop, this is sore, this is sore, oh okay, you can have your hen, you can have your tablecloth, just leave me alone. So Maisie said, that sounds like a great exchange. You can keep the broom, but I'm having a tablecloth and I'm having the hen. So Maisie took the tablecloth and the hen back to Grandpa Bob. And she showed Grandpa Bob the magic. And from that day on, Maisie and Grandpa Bob had plenty of food, they had no money worries, and they didn't need the broom to sweep all their cares away. 
and they lived happily ever after. Thank you for joining in the story. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.